Hello, my name is John Schneider. When I was a kid, I used to visit my grandma Vi in the Jersey Bayshore area, and I'd take 8mm movies of my family and their friends. In fact, I was the family filmmaker. Today I live here, but traded my film camera for video, and recently shot this tugboat in the Shrewsbury River. Welcome to Jersey Bayshore Country. This is where you'll find Raritan Bay, the Atlantic Ocean, as well as Sandy Hook Bay. Where is the Jersey Bayshore? Let's get oriented by starting with the big picture. It's somewhere in here, part of the universe and definitely part of our world. But it's like no place I've ever experienced. And as soon as we land, I'll show you around. Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Jersey Bayshore Country. I'm your host, John Schneider. And today we're at the Monmouth County Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. And with me is the Executive Director and the Chief of Police for this uh, particular organization, Ross LaCitra. Hi. Hello, John. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for uh, bringing us in and letting us see the facility. Yeah, uh, my pleasure. W- what are the broad array of services that you provide as an organization? Right. At the Monmouth County SPCA, of course, our primary focus is to prevent animal cruelty. A lot of people don't understand that the Monmouth County SPCA, as well as all SPCAs, are really created on a law enforcement component. The purpose of it is to prevent animal cruelty. The SPCA stands for the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to the Animals. In doing so, we offer adoptions, low-cost spayed and neuter clinics. We offer uh, you know, low-cost uh, vaccinations for the residents here in Monmouth County. So there's a lot of great programs that are going on here, and basically it's primary function, again, is to help the Monmouth County SPC proceed into the future and make certain that our animals are kept safe. Now, I, I noticed you have a lot of people that are working here. Are these volunteers, employees, and how big is this facility? And, and tell me all about the buildings that you have here. Certainly. The Monmouth County SPC was created in 1945. Uh, it is actually a charter of the New Jersey SPC, which incidentally is the second oldest law enforcement agency in New Jersey, mm. the second oldest state law enforcement agency. The New Jersey SPC was created in 1868, and in, somewhere in the 1870s, the state legislature changed the law and allowed the state to issue charters to each one of the 21 counties if they so desired to have their own SPCA. In 1945, Monmouth County was granted a charter. And right on this very spot, which was an old chicken farm, is when the Monmouth County SPCA started, and we're still here today functioning. And who pays for all this? This is all funded by donations and by generous work by the volunteers who come here every day to help us do the job. We have approximately 70 full-time employees here Mm. and over 500 volunteers, about 270 active volunteers every day that get involved with the Monmouth County SBC. So this is all funded by money that we generate through adoptions, through low-cost beta neuters, through low-cost vaccinations, from criminal charges that we file against people for animal cruelty. A lot of people don't realize that when we take someone to court and the case is adjudicated, that the money actually comes to the Monmouth County SPCA, which again is one of our primary functions is to prevent animal cruelty. Now, you you look like a police officer and so tell me what what how do you become the chief of police for the SPCA and do you have a police force and what are your powers well certainly yeah you know I we are a law enforcement agency created by state law and the Monmouth County SPCA Humane Law Enforcement Division consists of approximately five Uh, humane law enforcement officers. We have two full-time law enforcement officers and the rest are part-time law enforcement officers that come in uh, on their own time and actually volunteer Mm. and help us enforce animal cruelty laws in New Jersey. Um, I am a former police officer. I've been a police officer for 30 some years. I'm retired from the Monmouth County Prosecutor's Office. So that's how I eventually came here. My wife and I are very involved in animal welfare. Uh, We own a rescue farm in Monmouth County that we purchased about 16 years ago. Mm. So this is all kind of a a nice fit for me uh, upon retirement from my law enforcement career to come over here and take over in the Humane Law Enforcement Division. Uh, We answer approximately 70 law enforcement calls a month. That's how many we actually do. Every call that we come that comes into the Monmouth County SPCA, we, we actively investigate. Um, hmm. Thank God many of them pan out to be just uh, misunderstandings or uh, a misinterpretation of how an animal is being treated. 
Uh, but again, you know, we do run across uh, a fair amount of neglect and cruelty, and we actively pursue and prosecute that with the assistance of the Monmouth County Prosecutor's Office and the Monmouth County Sheriff's Office. Now, th this can be, no joke, dangerous work, right? I mean, what, what are some of the dangers involved in being a police officer? Well, one of the, the most dangerous things that a humane law enforcement officer uh, faces is, of course, the uncertainty. And many times, the involvement in investigating of blood sports where we deal with dog fighting and uh with my god does that happen here yes oh, it does it god. does it, it's very it happens and it's uh, it's more involved than you can you think and uh you know of course generally when dog fighting is involved a lot of times it comes along with drugs and gangs and and all the other components that associate it with dog fighting. So those situations can be quite dangerous and uh, you know we act accordingly. Of course being experienced for many years in my law enforcement background, especially in narcotics, uh, helps myself and my second in command, which is a gentleman by the name of Tom Nuccio. He's also a retired uh, detective sergeant from the County Narcotics Bureau. And uh, again, him and I make a perfect team together in combating the, uh, the animal cruelty here in Monmouth County. Do, do you have to pack a weapon? Uh, and, 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 you know, I mean, it's, it sounds, sure. my gosh. No, uh, I mean, the, do the dogs as well. I mean, not just dogs, but sure. animals in general, wolves and, and other things can be dangerous. Of course. Uh, humane law enforcement officers are full law enforcement officers. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, humane law enforcement officers go through a special uh, police training commission, modified police academy for humane uh, enforcement. In addition to that, humane law enforcement officers who are all commissioned by the colonel of the New Jersey State Police are fully armed and have full powers of arrest. Wow. So do we have wild animals here in Monmouth County that, that uh, you have to deal with? Well, primarily, no. Uh, we, there are wild animals here in New Jersey, but as a humane officer, we generally don't deal with uh, animal control issues. That's more oh, for I the see. animal control officer. I see. Uh, each town generally has an animal control officer. So, for instance, if you have a, uh, a wild raccoon that may be in your yard or wild uh, life that is threatening to uh, the safety of a human or, or property, generally the animal control officer will come out and handle that. The Humane Law Enforcement Division is here for the protection of the animals. You know, quite often I'll get calls from people who uh, want to report that they were bitten by a dog. And my common mm -hmm. phrase to them is, the Humane Law Enforcement Division, not that we don't care that you were bit by a dog, but we really care if you bite the dog. We're here for the protection of the animals, you know. Uh, that's what a humane law enforcement officer does. You also have to be a, a, a kind of a professor of, of human psychology, of too, course. don't you? Yeah, we do. Why, why do you think people are so cruel to animals? We find young people do it for enjoyment, and uh, for whatever reason, psychologically, that is, and it, it's quite sad and frightening at times. Yeah. You know, if you go back in history and you look through um, the history of serial murderers and, and people who've committed such heinous crimes over the years, they all have a history of animal abuse. And generally, uh, animal abuse will definitely lead to uh, much serious offenses if it's not caught early and dealt with. You know, I would imagine that there are um, just as many reasons for human beings not to have kids as there are human beings to not have pets. That's correct. That there are some people that, that have the right temperament to have pets and there are some that are not. Sure. And you have people come here and adopt. Do you screen any of these people at all? Yeah, we do. We have, we have a, a very uh, rigorous uh, screening process for people that come here to the Monmouth County SBC. And we do understand that people who do come here are, are always looking to do something good. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they are rescue animals here, and that's what we deal with, you know. So people who generally come here are always looking to take an animal from a shelter and give it a loving home. And, of course, you, we screen these people to see that they are um, able to not only uh, financially and physically handle the dog, but mentally handle the dog also, or the cat, or whatever animal that they adopt here. Because, you know, owning a pet is a serious oh, commitment. And, sure that, and, is. and that's what we find that, especially in the animal cruelty area, that a lot of people don't take that so seriously. That when they, when they find an animal or they take an animal to their custody, they don't realize the importance that this is a living creature. It needs medical attention, it needs love, and it needs to be treated like any other living creature needs to be treated. And so too often when people become financially strapped or in trouble, they neglect their animals. They're the last to, to get what's needed for them. And this is over the years as we run across animal cruelty and 
we run across people who are financially in trouble, who cannot feed their animals, who let them starve to death. Mm. You know, we always tell them there's an out. There's, you know, we can come here. We're here to help. You know, it's always better to come to us rather than if we come to you. And it's very, very important for people to understand that the Monmouth County SBCA is, is an agency that's here to always not only help the animals, but to help the people. That's why we're here. And we need to, we need to get that message out to anybody that if they're having trouble, if they can't afford their animals or they can't afford to uh, take care of them medically, that we're here to help them on every avenue. You know, we have a network of veterinarians throughout the county who do a lot of pro bono work for us. Hmm. You know, they, um, they're very sympathetic and, and they understand that not everybody has the financial means to take care of the animals that are in trouble. And all people need to do is to step up and say, listen, I need help. And we're always there to help. We have a very, very compassionate staff here who's always willing to go the extra mile to not only help the animal, but to help the people and maybe help them retain their animal. Yeah. You know, that's part of the program we have here. We have something that's called the Pet Pantry. And it was created after Superstorm Sandy. And we saw a need for people who were giving up their animals because they weren't able to feed them. Mm. And with the help of a lot of our partners like Petco and PetSmart and a lot of other uh, big corporations with the donations they give to us with food, we're able to transfer that food over to people who cannot financially afford oh, it. Nice. So they don't have to give their animal up, that they can come here and we can help them and get them on the right path of pet ownership and keep everybody happy. So do, do you have folks that come here well-intentioned and, and adopt a pet and you've, you've provided them with some, uh, uh, with some kind of uh, guidance that uh, realize it's just not going to work and they have to bring the pet back? That does happen. Of course it is. It's like anything else in life. You know, you can't, you, know, you don't have a crystal ball. Sure. So you can't tell how it's going to work out. You know, there are people that, that come here that you think that wouldn't be good adopters and they turn out to be the best sure. you know and you get other people that come here you think are bomb proof and of course they turn come back wind up returning the animals so you know mm. nothing's nothing's set in stone you know we always tell people that if they adopt an animal here from the Monmouth County SPCA and something goes wrong they can't handle it they can't afford it just to come back you know what happens uh, to the the animals that just you know they can't even be with other animals they could probably never have an owner what happens to them? Well, you know, here at the Monmouth County SBCA, uh, you know, we're a shelter that does not euthanize for space or, um, you know, it, it's unlike a lot of other shelters out there. You know, by law, after seven days, the law states that you can euthanize an animal if it's not claimed or adopted. Monmouth County SBCA doesn't do that. Um, we have a euthanization rate here of less than 5% of the animals that come into the shelter here. You know, to give you an idea, last year, you know, we took in uh, over 4,000 animals here at the Monmouth County SBC, and we mm. only euthanized 192. And out of the 192, some of them were brought in by their owners who were, you know, the, the animal was sick and needed to be euthanized for a while, you know, for its well-being. We only euthanize here for aggression and for illness. And, and can people, whether they want to adopt or not, can they come in and look around? Can they take a dog for a walk? Can they pet an animal? What's, Absolutely. The Monmouth County SPCA is open seven days a week. Oh. Uh, the only two days we're closed are Christmas and Thanksgiving. So we're always here uh, during normal business hours, Monday through Friday, 9 to 5, same thing on the weekends. Uh, they come in. We have adoption counselors that are always here that would be more than willing to help them find the right animal for their family. Uh, it's a great place. It's a great place just to come and visit. You know, we do have people who just come here for lunch and sit down and, you know, want to walk through, look at the animals or sit out on the park bench <laughs> and just relax and, and be in a great atmosphere that's really uh, relaxing to a lot of people. Does animal control round up the lost animals and bring them here or do they keep them or do you round up lost animals? Well, we do both. Uh, Majority of the animal control officers who work for the municipalities or contracted by the municipalities, when they when they have a stray dog or a stray cat or whatever they have, they need to bring that dog or, or animal to a location. And Monmouth County SPC is one of those locations. Uh, we service the majority of towns here in Monmouth County. Uh, we do take in uh, their animals that you know that come in from the towns. Uh, after seven days, if the animal's not claimed and the animal's up for adoption, and uh, you know we handle it accordingly every day. You know we we you know. It's you know those, those they come in sometimes they come in a lot sometimes they don't come in so often but you know it comes in a waves. So what is your favorite animal right now today that's
still here that, that if you had the room, you'd bring home? Well, <laughs> that's a hard question to answer. Uh, you know, well, they're all my favorite animals. I love all Oh, animals, come on. Pick, pick one. Who, somebody, know. there must be some sweet little dog or kitten or something that you just Well, love. there is one dog, you know, I, that I actually, um, we took in as a cruelty case. You know, mm. I, his name is Butch, and uh, he's at at Foster right now. And I have a little special feeling for Butch. Butch was abandoned in a dog crate in Assapink State Park oh. in the middle of the park in the middle of the night and uh, the alertness of a New Jersey state trooper coming through the park in the middle of the night, what's the chance, uh, happened to spot this, this dog oh crate and thought it was odd so the trooper got out of the car and investigated and found this poor little boxer pit bull terrier uh, so shaken and scared to death uh, in this crate. So the trooper rescued the dog, brought him back to the state police station, and of course the state police notified us immediately. Um, I responded the next day uh, mm. immediately out to the to the station because, you know, well, the, it was actually the same day because the trooper uh, found the dog in the middle of the night. Uh, but in, by the morning light, I had responded out, and this poor animal was uh, shaking so tremendously. It was so scared, and it, it has taken us months and months and months to rehabilitate this dog, but he is doing fabulous here. and 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 these these dogs or any other animals that have been the victims of cruelty they can be rehabilitated for the most part Absolutely. or is it a 50 50 kind of a no most of them can be rehabilitated you know they're loving animals and they're domesticated animals and you know that's the one beautiful thing about cats and dogs you know they want to be around people for the most part um you know it's genetically bred in them and hence why they're domesticated and uh for the most part all the animals that we bring in here uh, generally want to be domesticated. They need love, so they need a lot of patience. And that's what our staff does so well here, as opposed to so many other shelters. They're so great at giving the caring need that those animals need, and they take the time with them. You know, we have dogs that are here over a year, you know, mm. and it costs a lot of money to keep these animals here. Mm. You know, people don't realize the amount of money that it costs to keep an animal uh, sheltered here at the Monmouth County SBCA, you know, with its veterinary care, with its constant food, uh, around the clock. You know, after 21 days, generally, when we charge, we have a charge that we charge the towns to bring in an animal. Uh, after 21 days, w we start losing money. And mm. the average dog stays here about 50 some days. So uh, it's it's hard to stay above above the uh, a line here. And we generally always operate uh, in the in the red. So, um, you know, people's donations here to the Monmouth County SPC are very, very important for our survival. You know, we don't receive any government funding, and that's what a lot of people don't understand. Even though we are, are a government agency and we uh, perform a function for the government, the way the law was set up back in the 1800s, we're able to fundraise and try to generate the money for ourselves. But now that we're in the 21st century, it's very, very important for the government to understand that the SBCA needs to be funded. Mm. It needs to be funded by the government in part or in whole. Um, you know, I've been in discussion with our county officials, our county freeholders are very, very in tune here to the Monmouth County SBCA, and they are very, very supportive of, of us, and as well as the county sheriff and the county prosecutor. So it's good times here for Monmouth County, and it's a good time for the Monmouth County SBCA to, to be thrusted into the 21st century and to do the important work that we do here every single day. Now, as part of the charity work that I've done it, it, with seniors and uh, I've done some special education teaching of, of students that have special needs, uh, it seems that they always respond to animals, to dogs, especially the students' uh, special ed needs. Uh, have you had seniors come through? Have you had uh, classes of kids come through? Absolutely. We have, not only do we have classes of kids that come through in schools, and we do all kinds of outreach programs. Yeah. We also have educational programs where we bring animals out to the schools. We bring animals out to nursing homes. Uh, we oh. do all those, all those outreach programs. You know, we have a wide range of volunteers that really know how to touch the community with the animals that are here. And not only is it important for the animals, but it's very important for the people here that maybe are unable to own an animal or who maybe are stuck in a hospital. And, you know, just the uh, presence of an animal, it's amazing how healing that is to, to a lot of people. And it can't be um, you know, under, uh, underestimated at all how important you know, the feeling is to have an animal with you when you're not well mm. and how much joy it brings, especially to the elderly. 
you know, it really, really is remarkable, a remarkable thing to see. And you have a, a, a very beautiful campus here. Your facilities are very clean. Everybody uh, has a warm kind of smile. Uh, you sell things here too, don't you, to raise funds? What's that about? We do. We have on, on, on our campus here, we have actually a thrift shop. And a thrift shop is, is what it is. It's a thrift shop. It's basically a lot of uh, goods and clothing, and people clean out their homes, their garages, mm -hmm. and they come here and they donate it to the Monmouth County SPCA. And, of course, we, turn, in turn, sell it for a small profit. You know, well, it's all profit, actually, because we don't pay anything for it, <laughs> but for a small amount of money. You know, sure. it's, uh, it's a great bargain. I often walk over to the thrift shop and walk around and see what I can uh, spot and buy over there, you know. So, it's, so what, uh, are, what are the criteria if somebody wants to bring something here? Can they just drive up and dump it off? Or well, they, they, they can certainly come here with their goods. And, uh, of course, you know, we're restricted for space. Yeah. So we just can't take everything that everybody is willing to give us. We have a lot of wonderful people who donate here on a regular basis and they understand that. So it's a it's an important component here at the Monmouth County SBC. It's been here for many, many years. Uh, you know, myself, I've donated a lot of things over the years here to the Monmouth County SPCA. And uh, it makes you feel good. It makes you feel that, you know, you're donating it to an organization and in turn is going to be able to make money to help an animal out. Well, I, uh, listen, this is a very compelling story for all of you that love animals and appreciate animals. You don't have to have one, but, but I'm sure you appreciate them. Uh, what can somebody do out there to, to give money to this organization? What is the easiest way to donate? Well, the easiest way to donate to the Monmouth County SPCA is to, uh, is to call us, you know, at 732-542-0040. And uh, you can make a, a monthly contribution. You can make a one-time contribution. Uh, you know, we, we're, we're open to all types of, um, of, of charity and contribution. We have people who, who set up their estates with the Monmouth County SBCA, people who, uh, who leave us in their will. Um, who are very, very caring people who care for uh, animal welfare way beyond their existence here on Earth. So we have very, very many different assets. You know, they can call and reach for our development department uh, where we have um, great people who work there who will be able to assist them and tell them any way that they want to donate to help the Monmouth County SBC further our mission. And, and so you take credit card, you take PayPal, we uh, do. all that stuff. We do. And, and what about, can they send you a check? What's the address? Where do they, they send it? They can send a check. They can send a check to uh, uh, the Monmouth County SBC at 260 uh, Wall Street in Eatontown, New Jersey, 07724. They can go on our Facebook website. Uh, they can donate by PayPal. We have, a, uh, we have our own Monmouth County SBCA website. So there's a lot of different avenues for you to get in contact here with the Monmouth County SBCA. You know, we welcome everybody's help. We need it uh, to further this mission. It's very, very important. And, and it's uh, tax deductible, right? Absolutely. And, and do you get a newsletter or anything? Can you can you subscribe to something to we see do. what's going on? We do have a newsletter. You can subscribe to it. We also have a Facebook page that you can follow. Um, it's active all the time. We have a team that's constantly on it, constantly updating the Facebook page. Our website is be always being updated. So there's, with social media and the network out there today, you know, people can always find out what's going on here at the Monmouth County SBC. It's a good way for them to see animals that we, that we, uh, we put out on special, you know, to show to, you know, to bring them to the public that are here for adoption. Of course, mm -hmm. we can't put every animal up on the internet, but we do put quite a few of them up there that uh, you know, that, that, that need a home. Now, if, if you come in here to uh, look for a pet that you want to adopt, and uh, you, they'll go through the intake, and they'll be asked questions, and you'll guide them, and they're making the right decision. And once they decide, uh, it sounds kind of crass, but is there a return policy? Absolutely. <laughs> you know, if, if anyone comes here to the Monmouth County SBC and they adopt an animal, and it doesn't work for them, they always can bring the animal back here to the Monmouth County SBC. We'll never say no. Now, we, we try to make it work for everybody. You know, we're a very, very um, a responsible organization. And nothing's ever permanent here. You know, if, it's, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And that happens. It does happen. For the most part, it doesn't. But it does happen. We do have people that come back when animals don't work. And we, we gladly assist in any way we can. We are sitting in, here, I have to show people this. Uh, this is not up for adoption, but this is in a room. What do you, what do you call this room? This is the, uh, the cat screen room. It was built by uh -huh. 
donations from our volunteers. It's a place where all the windows open with screens. And there are several rooms like this oh, in the facility. several rooms here. And this room is, is an area where anybody, our volunteers or staff, or anybody that comes in here can come in with a cat and sit and just relax, uh, open up the screen doors when weather's permitting, of course, and uh, enjoy the fresh air for the animals that, that are, are in the shelter. And it's, it's just a wonderful, quiet space. And, and are the cats, is this a cat toy? Uh, well, it could be anyone's <laughs> toy. Right. And, and there are cats in here right now. And uh, they, they haven't signed the, the television releases, so they can't be on they camera. They can't, right. No, no. Right. We'll Their get agents won't allow them. <laughs> we'll get right. them on camera. They're all, so, do you think that, that animals... Uh, feel the love. Do you think that they know that they have been rescued? I do. I do. I really do. You know, when we, when we rescue animals, especially from really horrendous uh, situations where they're out in freezing cold buildings or tied up to a fence for, for 20, 30 hours at a clip before they're rescued and they're starving, when they bring them here and they're cared for and they're, and, and they're treated so tenderly, that I absolutely know that they feel the love. You can see it in their eyes. They know that they're safe. Yeah. And you so often see that when you look into their eyes, and I truly believe that from the bottom of my heart. Well, I'm, I'm so uh, glad you're here, and you have a great staff, and this is a wonderful place. I hope uh, you all will come down here to the Monmouth County Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals and uh, take a tour. Take a look at the animals and uh, see if you have room in your heart, and even more importantly, room in your home. place at home for one of these wonderful animals. There are so many to choose from. Thanks again. Thank you, John. For the time. Appreciate As it. always, uh, if you see me out there running around with a dog or a cat or I'm flying a drone or I'm in the boat or I'm walking down the street with my camera, please do stop and tap me on the shoulder and say hello because nothing is more important than meeting you. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you next week on Jersey Bay Shore Country. This summer, create your own adventure at the New Jersey Bay Shore where the sun always rises and sets on the water. Enjoy more than 30 miles of sandy beaches at the ocean, along the rivers, or on the Raritan Bay. Almost every water sport can be found at the Bayshore, from boating to fishing to swimming to beachcombing. Whether you drive, take the train, or hop aboard a convenient ferry from New York City, the Jersey Bayshore is right in your own backyard. Enjoy the scenery, history, and local attractions, such as Sandy Hook, the historic Twin Lights, or hike through the hills of Highlands. But don't forget to try one of our waterfront dining experiences before you leave. Your adventure is waiting to be discovered at the Jersey Bayshore. Visit us at jerseybayshore.com.